So we are looking uh, at a plate here that is uh, 20 inches long and uh, 10 inches height and uh, one inch thick and uh, has a surface that is subject to a surface load T or traction of 100, sorry, 1000 PSI. So it's force per length square. We are given that E is 30 times 10 to the power six PSI. Nu is a 0.3. And uh, we wanna use the constant strain triangular elements. to determine a safety factor. Okay, so when I'm looking at a plate like this, I'm gonna start my first step. We know the element we're gonna choose. I'm gonna start with discretization. So I'm gonna by, start by creating my element. So I'm be working in plane. So this is my plane, the X and Y direction. And uh, I am going to break my part simply into two elements. And I'm going to start labeling and uh, we're using the counterclockwise formulation. So I have here like one, two, uh, I'm simply going to call it one, two, three, and four. And it is important to respect the order here. Now, uh, dealing with this traction force, as we learn now, I'm gonna find the statically equivalent load. So if I'm looking at this, I'm looking at uh, uh, 1000 times 10 times one. So I'm looking at the 10,000 pound force total, right? Statically equivalent, I'm gonna apply a 5,000 pounds at three and 5,000 pounds at four. Now, uh, given that my surface is constrained, constrained, now I'm gonna, it's fixed. So now I'm basically gonna fix my nodes. Our goal is to write the global stiffness equations. F is equal to K multiplied by D so that we can solve for the displacements. Just to spell it out, F here are the external forces, external nodal forces, right? Including the equivalent. So these would be F one X, F one Y, F two X, F two Y, then uh, these are support reactions. Then looking at three, I have a 5,000 pounds. In the Y direction, I have zero. Looking at four, I have a 5,000 and zero. So these are, or this is the global external forces. Uh, the displacements, this is, these are the ones we're trying to solve for. We are gonna show the boundary conditions. So for one, I have a zero and a zero. For two, I have a zero and a zero. And for uh, three, I have a U3 and a V3. And for four, I have a U4 and a V4.
If I call this uh, element one, and this is element two. So element one, This is node one, node two, and node three. And again, as I mentioned, I'm using the counterclockwise directions. So this is gonna be my I, this is gonna be my J, and this is gonna be my M. My uh, local X axis parallel to the global X and Y also parallel to the Y. So K for element one is equal to T times A times B transpose times D times B. Remember this is 20 inches and the height is 10 inches. The area of the triangle is equal to one half the base times the height. So I have one half 20 times 10. This is equal to 100 square inch. In order for me to write B, I need to evaluate uh, uh, beta I and gamma I. Of course, the uh, Beta I, gamma, uh, beta I, beta J, beta M, and gamma I, gamma J, and gamma M, right? So beta I is equal to Y, J minus Y M, which is equal to 10 minus 10 equal to zero. Beta J, is equal to ym minus yi equal to 10 minus zero, which is 10. Beta m equal to yi minus yj, which is equal to zero minus 10 equal to minus 10. Gamma I is equal to XM minus XJ. So this is zero minus 20 equal to minus 20. Gamma J is equal to XI minus XM, which is equal to zero minus, yeah, zero minus zero, which is a zero. And uh, gamma M is equal to X J minus X I. So this is 20 minus zero, which is 20. I can uh, write my uh, B matrix as equal to one divided by two A, so that's 200, multiply by zero, zero, zero minus 20, minus 20 and zero. So these are the I, B, I, and then I'm gonna write my B, J. So 10, zero, 0, 0, 0, and 10. And then my B, M, I'm gonna have a minus 10, 0, 0, 20, and 20, and minus 10. We can evaluate D. Again, it says for a plane stress, E divided by one minus nu squared times one nu zero 
nu one zero 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 one minus nu over two. And uh, we are given a Poisson's ratio of 0.3 and E of uh, 30 times 10 to the power six. So I trust we can uh, plug in here to find our D matrix. Uh, to find our D matrix, then using B and D and T and A, we can find K. So I'm going to assume that you can do the numbers to find K and K is gonna be a six by six. But the important thing I wanna note here are the corresponding degrees of freedom. This K is gonna be responding to, yes. I just wanna show you here that when I write K, I'm gonna be referencing element one, then uh, three, then two. So I am respecting my counterclockwise order. So this is gonna be U1, V1, then I'm gonna go U3, V3, then I'm gonna have V3, uh, sorry, U, U2 and V2. I trust you can do the same for element two. For the sake of time, I'm gonna just skip some uh, steps. To come up with a K2 for element two, uh, just to show you here, element two, this is X and this is Y. So this is gonna be element two. Again, counterclockwise direction. This is node one, this is node four, and this is node three. We're gonna consider now for element two, this is to be I, J, and M. So when I write my stiffness matrix K for element two, I'm gonna have U1, V1, then I'm gonna go to four, U4, V4, and U3, V3. Now this is, import, is important and I'm taking the time to mark it because when you assemble the global stiffness matrix, you are adding these two, but adding the entries was associated with corresponding degrees of freedom with corresponding degrees of freedom. Okay, so for example, I'm gonna come here, this is U1, U1, and I have another component U1, U1, they're gonna add. Okay, well, in terms of like order, does it matter the, in the, the matrix? Yes, of course. So in terms of order, I'm gonna follow that order. One, two, three, four, Okay. right? corresponding to the degrees of freedom I identify. So I'm gonna come here and say like, this is like U1, V1, U2, V2, U3, V3, U4, V4. That's an important question. Andrea, you also had a question? Yes, I can as long as I keep the counterclockwise direction, okay? And this is important also, even for a beam element or a bar element. Once you identify your local axis direction, your start point start from the left or from the lower ordinate in the direction of that local axis. Okay, now uh, given that uh, we have four degrees of freedom that are constrained, I can write the modified, sorry, yeah. four degrees of freedom that are constrained, 
I can write a modified equation that only involves U3, V3, and uh, U4, and V4. And uh, this equation is gonna look like, so modified global stiffness equation. I have here the corresponding forces, the 5,000, the zero, 5,000, zero, is equal to, I'm gonna get 75,000 divided by 0 0.91, so you can verify your answer if you wanna work this at home. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna get a 240, a zero, a minus 140, a 70, 435, 60, minus 400, 240, minus 130 and 435. And of course this is symmetric. And this here is multiplied by U3, V3, U4 and V4. So we are solving here for four unknowns. And U3, V3, U4 and V4 are gonna be equal to 609.6, and uh, these are all times 10 to the minus six PSI, uh, sorry, inches, displacements. Now, if I compare that so the answer I would have got using solid mechanics, we have delta equal to PL over EA, right? And uh, my P was 10,000 pounds multiplied by the length, which is 20, divided by E, which is 30 times 10 to the power six, divided by the area, which is one by 10, I would get here 666.7 times 10 to the minus six inches. So you see that this is comparable to what I got in the X direction at node three and at node four. The last step that you're gonna have to do is to find the stresses here in order to determine a safety factor, we wanna find the stresses in each of the elements. So I'm gonna do similar to what we did with the first example, find sigma equal to D times B multiplied by the node 